Hey what's up, in this video you're gonna learn what throttling is and what throttling your functions means and does for you. It saves you computational resources, makes your app faster and more efficient. After a conceptual walkthrough I'm also gonna show you how to implement it in practice using a library called lodash.throttle that makes it super easy and also I'm gonna show you what to pay attention to when you actually implement throttling in your app. Let's get right into it. Okay, hey, before we take a look at how to implement throttling in practice, let's take a look at how it works first and then how it can benefit you. So let's say each 100 milliseconds, so 100, 200, 300 and so on, we are pressing one button, whatever that button might be, it doesn't matter, but we want to throttle a function based on key presses, right? We could also do that for a scroll animation that's what we're going to take a look at in practice. It doesn't really matter as long as the function is getting invoked a lot, we can throttle it and it probably makes sense to throttle the function. So how throttling works is the first time we are calling the function, it will get executed, right? Because there is no limit on the function yet. So this will actually trigger the function. I'm just going to make some parentheses here to illustrate the point, this function got called right here. And let's say our function has a cooldown or a throttling timeout of 200 milliseconds. So that will mean that the function will get called initially right here, but then in the second time we try to initialize that function after 100 more milliseconds, it won't get run because remember it's already running because the timer for that function is still active. So after 100 and 200 milliseconds, the 300 millisecond mark when we try to invoke the function again, this will now work because the 200 millisecond timer of the function has run out. So the difference is the function did not get called on every keystroke, but instead only on those keystrokes when the timer was reset. Similarly, the fifth invocation and the seventh invocation and the ninth as well would trigger the function, but these in between would not. And, this, and that saves us computing resources and maybe calls to the database and similar. So it's actually very useful to implement this kind of architecture in your app if you don't want to get one certain function to get called a lot, but instead you want to limit the times the function can get invoked in a certain time period, say like once per every second. That is totally possible with throttling. And now let's take a look at how to implement this in practice, right? We've got a Next.js 13 application, which is a React framework. If you're not, not familiar with Next.js, don't worry about it at all. You can do this just fine in React. This doesn't involve anything Next.js specific. Let's start with the JSX. And I think it's best to illustrate that, to illustrate that point with the, um, with the server already open. In Chrome, I think it's a bit easier to look at. So let's take a look at this side by side. We've got a current scroll position that you can see on the right hand side right here. Current scroll position, that's what this h2 is for. It's fixed at the top and we've got a scroll bar. That is because I've set the height of the overlying div to 5000 pixels. So we just have some something to scroll. And then we have a little bar that is red indicating the, scur the, the current scroll progress right up here. And then whenever we scroll, um, that is listened to by an event listener, we initialize inside of a use effect. And the handle scroll, the only thing this does is it sets our state. And let me move this a bit more over here. It sets this state scroll position we have up here each time the handle scroll gets run. And the handle scroll gets run each time there is a scroll event. So as you can probably imagine, if we take a look at what this looks like in the console, we are logging out every time the handling scroll is getting run. And that is a lot, right? As we scroll, we can see the function has got invoked 340 times. And that's, that's just way too much. It's totally unnecessary to run this function that often. It's costing us a lot of computing resources and we don't even get a benefit from that. Let me close this down. So in this case, it would actually make a lot of sense to throttle this function to only run once every 100 milliseconds, for example. And as you'll see, when we have implemented the throttling, that makes a huge difference. So the function won't get called 500 times, but rather like 10 or 20 times. So let's take a look at how to Im implement throttling in practice, right? We want to stop our development server for that. And then we want to add one dependency which is called yarn add or npm install and then lodash.throttle 
press enter, that's going to install the dependency for us. Now, if you're working in TypeScript, the types are not initially there when you just install the package. So if you're in TypeScript, you also want to yarn at dash D for a development dependency or npm install dash D and then at types slash low dash dot throttle, hit enter. And that's going to install the TypeScript types for us. Great. Now we've got the types installed. We can start the server backup. Let's close out of this console. And then let's implement throttling in practice. First off, let's take a look at what should be throttled, right? So the event listener should stay the same and also every time call the function. But as we saw in this drawing right here, imagine the blue function that we're invoking is the handle scroll. That's what we want to limit because that is setting the state and costing the computing resources. So we want to throttle this handle scroll function. And the way we do that is first off, we can import the throttle from low dash dot throttle. And I'm going to disable GitHub Copilot here. And that is a default import we can make from low dash dot throttle because that is the only thing this library does. And then after we have imported the throttle, we can wrap the function we want to throttle within that throttle we just imported from low dash. So we can say throttle and invoke that function. And this takes a callback function. And the callback function is going to be our initial function. So we can paste that in. Remember, this is what we had initially. And now we've just wrapped, wrapped that inside of the throttle. And as the second argument, we can pass a weight as a number. And that's going to be in milliseconds. So we can say we want to invoke this function only every 200 milliseconds and not beyond that. Now, if we save that, and then go full screen again in our project. Let that reload. And now let's go into the console and take a look at how many times the handle scroll will be logged out as we scroll. Let's try it out. And as you can see, instead of logging out the function or executing the function 500 times, it's getting run like 10 times, so way less. And the scrolling bar doesn't really suffer from that, right? You can see the text is, is um, updated more incrementally. And that's kind of the point, the scrolling bar looks kind of just as smooth without invoking the function 500, but only like 10 times, right? So it looks pretty much just as clean. You don't really notice it as a user. And that depends on how you set this interval right here, right? So if we set this to 1000, so one second, for example, that would look drastically different, right? The user experience would suffer, but you are saving way more computing resources. So it will take one second to update that function. And if we take a look at the console and see how, how many times this function actually gets run, it's only been run 11 times. And that is crazy. But the user experience suffers. Whereas if we set this to like 10 milliseconds, so the opposite end of the spectrum, it's kind of like not throttling the function at all. Well, we do get less invocations and the user experience is much smoother and much more responsive. And also the scroll right here but obviously it's costing us more computation resources. So depending on your use case, the thing you want to adjust is always this waiting period right here and see what fits the user experience and find the right balance between a good user experience and saving the right amount of computation resources. That's how you throttle functions in Java or TypeScript. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and use this um, in your project. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.